Hi, this is Dana or Carrie, author, speaker, survivor, and advocate. And today's topic is going to be about how I actually manifested medical miracles. It was a phenomenal experience. This has happened to me countless times throughout my life. And I wanted to share this story with you today. Um, let's start with this. Are you challenged with something physical going on in your life? Maybe you have chronic pain, inflammation, diabetes, some kind of medical challenges, and you might be looking for healing. If so, this video is for you. And we must know that miracles are something that happens every single day. We just need to be aware of it. And so let's start first by talking about what a miracle is and defining it. And then I'll share my inspiring story and some helpful tips for you if you're interested in manifesting amazing miracles and breakthroughs in your own life. So if we go to merriamwebsterdictionary.com, they define miracles as an extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. And it's also an extremely outstanding or unusual event thing or accomplishment. I think it's really interesting that even this dictionary is very well aware that miracles are an extraordinary event of manifesting divine interventions. I think that in itself is like the super profound truth that miracles are something that are very supernatural. We could think of it as something very divine. And some people think, you know, oh, miracles only happen to other people, but not to me. And I wanted to just confirm today that miracles can happen to anyone and to everyone. And we just need to be more aware of it. We need to understand if we want to manifest anything, including medical miracles, we have to be aware of a lot of different things and variables that go into manifestation. And a lot of it is, it's the power of the mind. It's our thoughts. It's our ability to actually envision that something that we want, such as a miracle, that it already took place, that it already happened, and that it became a reality and it came into fruitation into our lives. And so let me share my story with you. And I hope this encourages you today, especially if you are struggling and you need a miracle. All right. So this one goes back to January... 9th, 1993. And my story is a lot about my husband. Now, he's a really private person. I don't always talk about him and share like his own personal experiences. But because this is such a remarkable and outstanding experience that he has been blessed with, you know, this is his miracle, but I am a big part of his miracle. Now, the one thing I want to say before I even begin this story is that miracles aren't just about other people. We can actually intercede on behalf of our friends and loved ones and family and so forth. And we could play a big part in someone's miracle. You know, there is power in prayer. There is power in believing that anything could become possible. You know, a lot of it is about believing it, like knowing this is a possibility, no matter how outrageous it is, no matter what someone's dealing with, no matter what obstacles, even if someone is diagnosed with a terminal illness. I mean, the truth is many, many people have had miracles, including becoming a cancer survivor, um, beating addictions, um, people who have had chronic pain and they get their life back. And so please know that this is possible. Okay, so in January 1993, I woke up on an ordinary day and I had plans to spend the day and the evening with some family members. And my husband, Tony, 
had plans to go to a live football game right here in our area. And he was so excited about it because he's like this huge, huge football fan. So we kind of went separate ways where he did his thing, I did my thing, and our son was being cared for by his mother. So back then in 1993, my son was not even two years old yet. So young little, young little tyke. And so I'm with my sisters and my mother and back in 1993. And we went to the movies and then we went to a Chinese restaurant. So we're sitting there in this Chinese restaurant and we just placed our order and I'm enjoying my lovely Chinese tea when all of a sudden I had this notion, this absolutely horrible feeling come upon me. I could feel it, like literally feel it in my body that something terrible happened. Now, I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. I wasn't told anything. Anything. Nobody notified me about anything. Um, in 1993, this is in the timeline. No cell phones. You know, technology was not a big thing back then. And so it was a situation where just within me, within my spirit, you know, in my heart, I knew something was terribly, terribly wrong. I just didn't know exactly who it was, but I knew it was someone who was a close loved one of mine. So my first concern was that it was my son and he was being um, taken care of by my mother-in-law, but I really sensed this urgency within me. And, you know, some people can call it, you know, they had a sixth sense. Someone can say it's their intuition. Another person can say it's, um, you know, this prophetic gifting. You know, everyone thinks upon it differently, but I really do believe that I have many, many gifts, and some of these spiritual gifts are the knowing of something before it happens or right when it happens, and yet I hadn't, like, known, I hadn't seen it, I hadn't physically observed anything, but yet within my spirit, within my spirit, now I know there's people who understand miracles, and they understand breakthroughs, and they understand supernatural phenomena, you get it. Now there's other people, they might be more like the naysayers, they don't understand. It's it's okay if you don't get it. You know, my story doesn't change, it doesn't diminish the fact that a miracle happened. But we, I, I'm not gonna rush to the miracle yet. We really need to get through the main gist of what took place on January 9th, 1993. So it was the afternoon, my husband, was at this football game and I was not aware that there was a tragic accident that occurred, that he was in a really intense accident. And so there I am, you know, eating my meal and preparing to, you know, enjoy my night with my siblings and mother and enjoying this Chinese restaurant when I have this unbelievable notion, this terrible gut instinct within me that something horrible happened and there was an urgency and the urgency prompted me to immediately go home, to not finish the meal, to get in my car and to drive home. So I'm praying as I drive and I'm pleading with God, you know, that nothing was seriously wrong with anyone. However, I was not 100% what was going on. So I rush home walk in the front door, I look at my mother-in-law, and it was without words. I look in her eyes, and I knew that my gut instinct was correct. So I look at her, and she said, it's not your son. Your son is okay. He is in bed now. It's late. I need to go home but it's your husband. He had a very bad accident at the football game. He is now in a trauma unit. He is very injured. So you need to rest and tomorrow you could go see him. And that was a really rough thing, you know, to know that my husband was in a bad accident and by now it was late at night and it was too late for me to go to the hospital. And my mother-in-law needed to go home, so I had no one else to care for my son. And so I had to basically just go to bed and toss and turn all night. And, and then I wake up the next day and 
huh, my human instincts kick in and my human instinct was this. I knew that I knew that I knew what really happened. Um, and so this is something that you need to know. My husband was addicted for six to seven years, very addicted to alcohol, drugs, and gambling. And this was an extremely heart-wrenching experience for me as his wife, as the mother of my child. This literally destroyed our marriage. It destroyed his ability to parent. You know, when someone has an addiction, whether it is addiction to alcohol, gambling, drugs, or something else, addictions are destructive. They tear not only the person who's addicted, their life apart, but it tears their family's lives apart. You know, because us people who are observing the addicted person, we are so in pain. We don't want to watch them destroy their lives and tear their lives apart. And we watch them over and over and all these terrible things that happen. And it is just the most horrifying thing on earth to observe this. And I was at my wit's end. Okay, so by January 1993, I was at the end of my rope. And so I wake up that morning and I started having a wrestling match with God. Now I'm just going to give a quick FYI. I was very new to salvation. I was very new to becoming a believer in God at that time in my life, 1993. And I was having this wrestling match with God in which I said, you know, I am so upset. I'm upset with him for being destructive. I am upset with him for choosing to not get help. Um, I can't fix him. I can't help him. I can't restore him. And so I just started praying, you know, like, God, only you can do what you can do. And I am praying for a miracle. And so from there, I walk into my kitchen and I knew that I needed to hurry up. I needed to make breakfast for my son and I because I needed then to drop him off at a babysitter so I could go to the hospital to visit my husband. Because remember, I still don't know the diagnosis. I don't know all the details of this accident. So only at this point did I understand, yes, there was an accident. Yes, it's severe. And that's it. That's all I know. And there are no cell phones. There was no technology or any way for me to get the information. And so there I am. I'm in my kitchen now. I open up my freezer to get ice cubes because I'm a big fan of drinking ice water. And as soon as I opened up the freezer, all of a sudden I was literally washed in peace. It's hard to explain, but all I could say is that the peace that surpassed all understanding washed over me. And just like that, I was flooded with this supernatural calm and peace and I didn't know where it came from other than knowing that it had to be from up above and I know that this was something supernatural happening and I sensed right at that moment it was like not an audible audible voice so no I didn't hear God speak but I sensed within my spirit the Lord say I am going to do a new thing and this is what I'm going to do I am going to rescue your husband I am going to restore him and please stay hopeful keep praying and trust in me and so i knew that i knew that i knew and i had no way to even describe it and yet i knew without logic i didn't need logic i knew that there was something amazing happening. I knew that there was a divine sign that just took place. I knew that God is real and miracles are real. And I believed at that moment that anything could be possible, including restoration of my husband and his addictions and any injuries he may have experienced during that horrible accident at the football game. And so after dropping my son off and heading to the hospital, I walk in to his hospital room and was just shocked at what I saw. So my husband was not a believer. My husband actually was really against religion. He was really not into religion. He was raised Catholic, but he just didn't have a whole lot of faith. And he had some negative experiences too with the Catholic religion. And so there he is 
sitting next to a male nurse in his hospital room. And this male nurse is talking to him about the Bible. And it was just shocking to see and to observe this because my husband was never, ever open to discussing faith or religion or anything that had to do with spiritual awakening or any kind of like God moments. He was not open to that. And it was just like, I knew that something was happening and that there was a divine inter intervention that was taking place. There was a miracle that was taking place. And upon visiting my husband and then talking to the orthopedic surgeon and the nurses and staff at the hospital, they updated me on what took place. And so they shared with me, your husband was at the football game. He was drinking heavily prior to the game. There was a tailgate party. Him and his friends were partying heavily. He was extremely intoxicated. And when he was up in the bleachers, you know, the stadium watching the football game, he accidentally tripped on a blanket. He fell five rows down and he was heading to the concrete. Like he was literally flying in the air, headed for the concrete when he didn't want his head to be um, injured. And so he put his right arm out in which his olecranon and his radius were shattered. So the olecranon is your elbow, your radius is your wrist, and both were shattered. So it wasn't like the orthopedic surgeon can just put on a cast and say, there you go, you're fine, you're on your way. No, the surgeon said, this is what's happening. He has severe, intense damage to his elbow and his wrist, and he will have surgery, and he will be off work for one year, and he's going to be in physical therapy for a long, long time time. And we don't know if he'll ever be able to be in uh, commercial construction ever again, or if he'll ever even be able to use his right arm again. And we're going to use a Hoffman device with four pins to keep his olecranon, which is the elbow, together and help it mend and hope that he can be restored and at least get some motion back into his elbow. But we can't guarantee any medical promises all we can do is have surgery and hope for the best. And so with that, my husband had surgery. I prayed hard. I intervened. I talked to people at the time when I was in church and they were intervening and everybody was praying for my husband. And so lo and behold, after my husband was finally done with surgery and after several days, he was released and discharged to go home. And then they decided that I would be his nurse. So they trained me to do pin care on his wounds. And I had to do this many times a day, clean his wounds, do this uh, sterile technique. Um, it's really ironic that I ended up becoming a surgical technician after that. But there you go. I had my experience firsthand being his nurse to nurse him back to health. And during the six months of this initial nursing him back to health, what I noticed right away, so the first month of him recovering at home and me trying to help him and doing pen care, and you know, still, I was still praying for him and asking for a miracle. And what happened was one day I'm doing uh, the cleaning and sterilization and the whole pen care of his wound. So you'd have to clean it and put new gauze and the whole thing, and it was painful, it really hurt him. Um, so it was, it was challenging, you know, you don't want to hurt the patient, but you know, you need to make sure there is no in infection. And that was the most, um, crucial part of my part in helping him heal and recover. But during that moment where I'm doing the pen care and I'm chatting with Tony, I said to him, please tell me how, how did you stop drinking? How did you go cold turkey from gambling, drinking, and drugs, and you have not gone through wicked withdrawals? I'm trying to make logical sense out of something, and it just isn't adding up. So in my mind, I didn't understand how my husband could go cold turkey from alcohol and drugs, and even gambling, and he didn't have not one single wicked withdrawal symptom. I mean, that is phenomenal and miraculous in itself. And my husband said, here's the thing. He said, Dana, I had the accident. 
and God was knocking on my door. He said, and God told me that if I don't clean up my life and if I don't get free from these drugs and alcohol and gambling and everything that's addictive and destroying my life and your life, I could end up dead or I could end up killing someone. And he said, I was scared. And so I heard God knock at my door and I answered and I said, yes. And I surrendered to the Lord. And for some people who aren't into religion, you know, to you, that might just be, you know, preachy, preachy. Maybe to you, it's no big deal. But this was the most phenomenal experience to watch my husband be transformed right before my very eyes. And what happened was my husband gradually became a new man. You know, in a matter of months, I watched and observed my husband go from being this very destructive, addicted person who was constantly passed out from drinking and drugs and spending money that we didn't even have to spend with the gambling and so many destructive things and accidents that had happened. He had been in accidents many, many times over his drinking and drugs. And so what happened was I could see that he, he was sober and he was no longer in any addictive you know, modes. He was no longer practicing, you know, all those destructive behaviors. He cleaned up his life. He suddenly decided he wanted to go to church with me. I mean, it was just like the most amazing and remarkable experience to observe this and to be a part of this. And I really think that the truth is I was a part of the miracle. You know, I knew that my husband had addictions and I intervened on his behalf and I asked for a miracle and God answered, you know, and for someone to think that this is fake, no, it's not fake. You can't tell me that someone who is addicted to drugs, alcohol, and gambling can just clean up by themselves in their own flesh, just suddenly go cold turkey and have no wicked withdrawals. Sorry, no, that doesn't happen. That's not typical. The average person who stops the drugs and the alcohol, they go through horrible, horrible withdrawals. I mean, we're talking dry heaves, nausea, dizzy, vomiting, migraines. Sometimes people go through hallucinations and panic attacks and all kind of physical pain. There are just so many various symptoms that happen with withdrawals, especially from addictions. And so I know that there was a miracle that took place. And what's really amazing is that on January 9th, 2021, it is going to be my husband's 28th year of sobriety. Now, this is a big deal, people. This is a miracle. This is an accomplishment. And yes, there was divine intervention, and I really believe that God used me as a tool. You know, this is what God does, and this is what prayer is all about, and this is what manifestation is all about. You know, so whether you believe in it or not, that doesn't change the fact that miracles happen. And here's a really great quote, and it is by Albert Einstein, and he shares, There are only two ways to live your life. One as is as if there is no miracle, as if there is no miracle. And the other is though everything is a miracle. And that is so true. So part of manifesting miracles is that we must believe it. We must envision it in our mind. We must see it. We must speak it out loud. So a lot of manifestation is speaking out loud what we want to become our reality. So if we want a medical breakthrough, if we want to be healed from chronic pain, inflammation, addictions, or what have you, we need to be speaking it into our lives. The power of prayer, the power of manifestation is incredible. And so we see it, we speak it, we write it down on paper, we journal it, we every day affirm over and over the miracle we want in our lives and it can come to fruitation. So share with me, have you ever experienced a medical miracle? Have you experienced any form of divine intervention or real life miracles? And if so, share with me more about it, like, subscribe, 
share and have a beautiful day. And please never give up on yourself. Never give up faith. Never give up praying because there is power in prayer. It turns something impossible into something remarkable and possible. God bless and have an awesome day.